Hello, everyone. This is David Solomon from CoBuzz, and welcome to CoBuzz Live on Thursday. We're happy to have you. We are having a couple of technical difficulties with Joe, so uh, bear with us a little bit, and I'm sure he'll be uh, he'll be popping on any time. Uh, but thank goodness, I usually do a little spill about CoBuzz, so uh, I'll go ahead and hop into that. Hope everyone is doing well today. So let's see. Let's uh, let's hop into this right now. I'll tell you a little bit about CoBuzz. We've got over 70 million tracks now. We started with about 40, so uh, you know we had it almost double what we had uh, since we first started. So up to 70 million tracks now, and of course we're adding just hundreds and hundreds every single week which most of the ones that are being added are being added in high resolution, which is absolutely cool and uh, really talks to our narrative at any rate. These files, most are available at 1644, but we've got over 2 million that are available in up to 24192 FLAC. So you don't really need any uh, special gear or special DACs to uh, be able to listen to COBAs. Every file that we get is straight put up on our service. We don't do anything to it. Uh, so, um, so what you're getting is exactly what we get from the uh, from the labels. So, there's not so much about Cobuzz that's rich and um, and uh, um, a little different than most of the other services. One of them being our editorial. We have got so much editorial. So if you're if you're a music lover and you're a music information lover, you will you will probably won't be able to read everything that we've got on there. And we're adding things in daily. Um, we've got a uh, our music manager Sujan Kong is is uh, uh, Sujan Hong is is uh, responsible for so much of this stuff. And Su Sujan is actually going to be on the uh, on the broadcast in a little bit. And she'll be talking about some of the new albums that we've got. But yeah, so we've got just tons and tons of editorial available. And the pricing structure is really, really good for uh, for about $12.50 a month if you pay annually or $15 a month if you don't. Uh, you can get all of this content, every bit of it. When we started, we were almost twice as priced. We, when we came to the United States a couple of years ago, we were we started out at twenty five dollars uh, for a subscription, which even then, to me, was a really really good deal. Especially if you were someone like me who who had a uh, had a print. print propensity to uh to buy lots of downloads <laughs> so if you do like to buy downloads uh we've got them for you but if you're going to be in the uh in the download uh uh side of things you probably want to hop onto our sublime membership only because you get such incredible prices on downloads here's a here's a good example um this is Neil Young Harvest. I, I usually have this one up there because it's one of my favorite albums, first off. And it just really shows what you can buy this for if you're a normal Joe. If you're a normal person, you don't even have Cobuzz. You can go to Cobuzz.com, go inside the download store, and you can buy this wonderful album at $24,192 um, for, uh, for $20, which is incredible. However, if you're a Sublime member... You can buy the same album for ten dollars and ninety nine cents. So if you're any good at math at all, and I promise there wouldn't be any math, but if you're any good at math at all, you could you can find out how quickly that a Sublime membership would actually pay for itself if you are in the uh, in in a download mode. Um, so at any rate, that is CoBuzz, and uh, let's see. Welcome. It appears that um, Joe is not quite back with us. So today we do have uh, Joe uh, Finn on from uh, from Paradigm. Paradigm. I said that a uh, Parasound. I keep saying that. Uh, Joe's an old friend of mine. I've known him since like I'm pretty sure right around 1982 or 83, something like that. Um, I had gone to work for a company called Hi-Fi Buys, and they sent me to Chicago to learn all about Bang & Olsen. Well, I get there, 
this was like the funnest trip ever. There were people from all around the country um, that I didn't know. They were also there. Uh, so you've got to meet a lot of really, really cool people. Uh, Joe happened to be one of them. Joe was one of the trainers, actually, and 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 really profoundly uh, helped influence my life. I, I, I was watching Joe and seeing everything that he did, and I kept I kept going this guy is unbelievably good. He's so talented at what he did and disseminating, disseminating information, talking about information that was really quite advanced and really kind of bringing it down to a, a very simple level. I always think that the smartest people in the world can take the most difficult concepts and drive those down to a level that almost anybody could understand whether you you've been in the, that particular industry or not. Um, it's like uh, Stephen Hawking's, if you ever read his book, um, it, he takes basically quantum physics and he, he cooks it down to a level that almost anyone can understand, even me. Uh, so Joe is one of those kind of guys and we're really happy to have to have him uh, if he is uh, when he shows up. So before that, let's uh, let's take some let's take some questions. We'll well, we'll just kind of hang out together and. Uh, if you've got any questions about CoBuzz, we will um, we'll 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 take those questions now and just wait for for Joe. I will tell you during today's show that we're going to be doing a giveaway. Uh, we're going to be giving away three six month subscriptions to CoBuzz, and with those subscriptions, we're going to be giving away three pair of sound T shirts. They're really cool. Uh, Joe's got a picture of it, or actually, he's got the T shirt. He'll show you once we uh, once we get in. So let's see, um, <laughs> David uh, Martinez Jr. I named my son Cobuzz. That's nobody's ever going to be able to pronounce his name. I can tell you that to begin with, uh, but but that's uh, that's absolutely cool. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, let's see if we've got any questions coming in, and um, let's see. Hey, Co is Co Cobus is better than Tyler? Okay, great. Some people, th I, ho I hope you think that. We certainly think that. Uh, let's see. Hi, David. Hello, Facebook user. If you don't sign up and actually let us know, you know, your name before this, you're only Facebook users. So we will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, address you as uh, good afternoon, everyone. Glad to be here. Hello, Tom, uh, Tim. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Scott, can I get a, another annihilator to put on? Yes. Let's see. Okay. Today we're going to be talking with Sue Jan, and she'll be telling us a little more stuff that she's bringing in. Mark Freed is here from Expona. We're looking forward to Expona. We're going to be doing shows starting in, I think, July, maybe the first one. There's a Northwest Pacific call, uh, show. I think it's called the Seattle Audio Fest. Uh, we're going to be attending that, and uh, I cannot tell you how much I have missed being out. Uh, let's see. Facebook, another Facebook user. Best streaming service on the planet, period. Thank you very much. We think so. Wow. I'm. We're, we're getting so many accolades here. Anybody got any problems? <laughs> Anybody? Let's see. Uh, how do I sign up? This is James Owen. Okay, James. Thanks, buddy. Uh, just go to cobuzz.com. Everyone uh, on planet, or, or actually everyone in the United States, can get a 30-day free trial uh, with Cobuzz. Let's see. I'm in Seattle. How do I get there? Just look up the Northwest uh, uh, show, and there'll be uh, there'll be uh, all kinds of stuff on the uh, on the internet about it. If not now, then very soon. A couple of really really good guys are going to be showing. Uh, doing this show one of them is gary gill he's the he's the gentleman that's responsible for the dc show the washington dc dc show capital audio fest and the uh the other fellow um lou um oh jesus lou hinkley who owns daedalus audio another really really cool guy both of those guys got together and decided that they needed a show in Seattle or the or the Northwest at some point in the Pacific Northwest. So as soon as I heard about that, I'm I'm going. I can't wait to be there. I am very much looking forward to it. Um, 
Hey, Liz, well, we've got another, oh, for really got a, got us a compliance. Sometimes my CoBuzz crashes and doesn't load music when I have downloaded it. So I usually don't download anymore. I just stream and uh, it loads fine most of the time. I don't really have that problem. Um, but if you'll write us uh, it, at our customer service um, uh, email, we'll be able to help you out there. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I download stuff all the time and I don't really have that problem. Um, let's see what else we get. Do you recommend, uh, Cobas? Yeah. Uh, I do have some recommendations there, uh, because I actually went through this, uh, with my son. Um, I, I put no on, on Cobas, I guess it was about two years ago and, uh, he had been an avid Spotify guy. And so we, I, I put a no, no on it. He's going, dad, I, I really don't want to do this. Um, I, I really, I just want Spotify and I'm going, well, you know, this is the company that I'm working for and I'm your dad. So you're going to support me whether you like to or not go <laughs> Spotify is gone. So I got him on to co -Buzz, and uh, a few months later he hopped up to the office and I let him listen to the difference. I had let him listen to the difference before and he said he couldn't tell the difference. It didn't really matter. Uh, I let him listen to it about, I guess it was about six months later. And the first thing he said was what's wrong with that? that signal. So I switched back to Cobuzz and I switched back to Spotify and he's going, oh, oh yeah. So Cobuzz does sound a lot better. So yeah, get your kids on there. I think it's about 26 bucks a month, 25 bucks a month. You could have five people in your family on our family account, um, which is really cool. Um, so at any rate, um, hop on Cobuzz and get your kids on there. Once you do get them uh, used to high resolution, they really won't be able to to go back or they won't want to go back if they're if they're actually listeners. I was really blown away when um, when uh, Noah said this to me. Uh, let's see. Oh, and some of you guys may have heard about Spotify going to high res. What they're actually doing is they're going to go to full res. They're going to go to a system very much like Deezer. So what they'll end up having is 1644 um sound quality which is a lot better than they've got right now but it certainly doesn't match into um uh it certainly doesn't uh hop into high res territory as in anything uh that's 24 bit or uh or uh, higher speed so at, at any rate uh yeah we're gonna do that let's see Nitha, we have got it looks like someone on here it might be Joe. Is that Joe's computer by any chance? The Jenny Sacrum? Scram? Sorry. We're going to bring him on and see. Is this Joe? No, it's not. Hi, it's Jeannie Schramm from Parasound. I, I'm queued in to, to listen to Joe with you. And Richard says hi, by the way. <laughs> Tell him um, he said hi. Hi there. Hi, David. So, uh, yeah, I've reached out to see. Um, yeah, Joe's having some computer problems. He I was, figured that must be the issue because I know he was very excited to be on your show. And well, I'm um, excited to have him. Okay. And I'm going to buzz off because I can't begin to answer anything that Joe could. <laughs> no problem. I was just, I was just making sure that that, that wasn't Joe. I was thinking, wow, I wonder if yeah. Joe's maybe using Joe's, someone else's computer. Joe's going as an alias. No. <laughs> we'll give, uh, we'll give Joe a few more minutes and uh, okay, if he doesn't great. show up, we'll, we'll reschedule. Thank you okay. a lot for uh, hopping on. Okay, everybody, we're back with Cobuzz Live and it's just me. So, uh, this is the first time I've had a kind of uh, uh, weird situation like this. So we're going to give it another few minutes. And, and if, if uh, Joe can't show up, then we'll, we'll reschedule and get it back on. We really want to show you some of this stuff from Parasound. But let me tell you a couple of things that we were going to end up talking about anyway. Um, one was just the signal to noise ratio of this, uh, of this product, which we find incredible. Incredible, and you won't find this in in many uh, in many amplifiers and preamplifiers that cost this little. Um, and I'll I'll explain what I'm talking about. Um, and I know this for a fact because I've used the I've used PR Sound in in quite a few shows. Um, but you look at their spec sheet, and you'll see 
most everything they do is somewhere above 110 dB signal to noise ratio. And you may want to know, you know, what does that mean? Um, and I'll never talk about specs that actually don't mean something. So let me just go into a little bit of detail on that. When we start talking about um, signal to noise ratio, it really refers to how black you can get your background. In other words, how quiet is your system? So if your system is like super, super quiet, like the Parasound is, I, I don't really recommend doing this, uh, but unless you really know what you're doing, but you can take their their uh, integrated amplifiers or any one of their pre-amplifiers and literally crank the thing all the way up to like way past where it would be clipping, way past where you would be catching the woofers if you actually put a signal through that system like that. And what you're going to find is it'll be totally and completely black background. In other words, it'll be, it'll be totally silent. Why did I bring that up? The reason that I bring that up is because that's what you really want when you're listening to high resolution audio. Um, you want the blackest or the quietest background that you can possibly get because most of the things that happen in high resolution happen at a very, very, very low level. So when you, you know, when you add all of these things together, they end up making a, a pretty big difference. However, if your if your preamplifier or your amplifier or your system in general is making any kind of noise, like it, it sh or whatever, just a little bit of noise, then you mask uh, a whole lot of that, a, a whole lot of that high resolution. So that's why I wanted that. That was one of the things that I was talking to Joe about early on. I'm going, you guys are totally genius for coming up with circuits that will actually do that because it really does meet the modern world of high resolution. It's something that it's got such a black background that when you get to that nth level of decay, you still have information that you can hear from the system as opposed to the system taking over and noise. So that's one of the things that I really like about Parasound is that they do have that incredibly black level and they don't brag about it a lot. I think I end up bragging more on Pira Sound for their uh, their black ba black background than they do, and, and other things that they've got going on. Uh, and I cannot wait to get a couple of these th things in here because I want to test out the the JC1 uh, power amplifiers. Their monoblock power amplifiers, hugely hugely powerful. Plus, they're like I said, the same kind of black background that you find on their on their preamps and other components. So. That's uh, that's one of the things I was going to talk to uh, to Joe about and then find out if they've got uh, uh, shows that they're going to come up. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe we might have a stand in for Joe and it kind of looks like we do. So I'm going to bring hey, you this. I recruited hey, the hey David, how are you? <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I'm OK, thank you. <laughs> didn't even have, didn't even have time to brush my beard. Jeannie came running out and said, "You don't want to miss this opportunity." So here I am. Well, welcome. Thank you, Jeannie, because that's what's on your screen. <laughs> no, you know, you'd, you'd rather do business with her. I've got shower hair on. I'm not coming onto the screen. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? This is the man himself. Can you introduce yourself and tell what you do for Paradigm? Parasound. Parasound. Well, I first keep of doing all, that. <laughs> I know. That was deliberate, I know. Well, first of all, the uh, caption under me isn't correct because the, the female next to me is Jeannie. I'm Richard. <laughs> um, we own the company, and we started it in um, 1981. So we've got a 40th anniversary year coming in starting in September. Wow, and that's the, uh, the, def the that's definition of running the definition of owning the company is that we get to do what none of the employees is willing to do. So it's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, at least there, there's some people that o open a company because they're totally unemployable. Uh, well, we certainly are now. <laughs> you, you know, you know who told me that? Um, uh, I, I, I did a quick stint, maybe it was a year or so with um, with AudioQuest. And the owner, Bill Lowe, he 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 would frequently tell me that the only reason he opened his company is because he was totally unemployable. <laughs> that's well, certainly that's not pretty well for you, Richard. Richard and I met. Well for himself. He's a good guy. <laughs> Richard and I met uh, just 
I, and I, so I still can't believe this because it was like we were two peas in a pod. I don't know if you remember the day that we met. I remember the exact time that we met. Um, I don't remember the show, but it was at one of the audio shows and I was walking by and I'm going, I've always wanted to meet you, Richard. I'm David Solomon. And we sat in the hall and we had a great oh, yeah, 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 of course. about three yeah. minutes. Uh, about yeah, you, you, you choose good college. company. Dave's, David's a good guy. <laughs> so I, but don't we tell him I said about, so. <laughs> we were talking about, uh, we were talking about, you know, how you got your start and uh, all about the company. And, and, you know, you may have, you may have thought I was blowing, you know, warm sunshine up your skirt because it was the first time that we had met, but I really wasn't. Um, the things that you guys have been able to accomplish in your company have been, uh, absolutely amazing. Um, how does it feel to be making gear that really uh, 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 compares to gear that are three, four, five, six times more expensive? I think it, that's super, super cool. Well, it, it feels well, great. By the way, we met at Rocky Mountain, Mountain uh, the, the last Rocky Mountain show in 2019. So just to, so I, I remember. Uh, how does it feel? Well, it's the only way I want to feel. This feels. This is always what I've wanted to do, um, and cut right through to it. Um, I like the idea of giving people more than they think they're getting for their money, um, and that's I think one of the reasons why we're here doing it forty years later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I'll attest to that. What's uh, uh, Tell me a little bit about the design, because you've got some kind of famous people that work with you uh, in helping to design this. By the way, Richard, are you an engineer yourself? Huh. No, but I've but, but just, you just you know, don't know, like just, it one. No, just no. On, on the job, um, I've accumulated a lot of knowledge, and um, but I don't want to I, I don't want to um, embarrass myself by trying to tell you all of the technology of the products, but I've got a, I've got a pretty good, I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on and why. You know, uh, I, I love companies like yours because um, I actually had one set very similar to this. I'm, I'm not an engineer either. I've got a pretty good idea of how mechanics work and things work. But when you start, when you start designing electronics to sell, um, you want to probably get the best people you could, possibly get to help you design the circuitry and make the amps and preamps and, and those kinds of things. And you got a pretty famous guy helping you out making some of this stuff, right? Yeah. He called me at eight o'clock this morning. Very rude. I think. <laughs> yeah. John and Curl. John Curl, Curl. <laughs> John Curl is a certified legend um, and has been for decades now. Uh, and he's still one of the people who really gets how, electronics you know electrons pass through uh an audio piece of equipment and um and some of his products from many many decades ago are still revered as the best you could you know the best you could buy in that category um john we didn't i didn't set out to to find a john curl originally uh, our ambitions when the company was started were much much lower um and the way that the way that John and I got together, and by the way, I'd, I'd encourage any any of the viewers to just Google just Google his name and see and see what you find because it's it's really it's really incredible. But there was a woman working for Parasound. Her name was Karen Richardson, and she was very very friendly with John. And she said, you know, you you know, to John, you guys ought to meet. And John was aware of a preamp that we had done. Uh, before meeting him, and he thought that our heart was in the right place, and it had sufficient merit that he might want to um, help us make these things better. And this was 1988, um, so we we got together and put him on a retainer. And the first product of his uh, influence to Parison was the original JC1, which, after some amount of uh, some significant amount of time and development, came into the mar market in. Uh, early 2003 uh, and the template of that and what, you know, John's sensibilities about that still, still inform everything that we do in our halo line that, you know, that bears John Curl's signature on it, but he so really, he really gets line. it. And when he tried, and we starts talking to physics, physics to me, 
Um, I don't do so well, but I say, John, try English, and <laughs> then I, you know, then I can get it. But we've learned so much from him. And unlike, you know, what one of the advantages of having a guru um, is there's a certain honesty to it. I admire people who come up with great products and they might be very smart and they've got a good idea, but unless they've got the, the grounding in physics that Curl has and the kind of experience he's had, um, you know, some experiences better than others, there's a lot of people that really believe their products are fantastic and, and many of them probably are, um, but a lot of them, not so much. And the higher up you go in price, the more visible that can be you've got a pet you've got a pet idea a pet concept about something and you build a product around it um and that's you know and that's okay it's just not what we choose to do which is why our products can stay in the market for so long we don't you know we don't change them every year we don't upgrade them there's no a version b version c version or whatever we just decide to get it right in the first place um, and so whenever you're ready to make uh, any kind of new product, is John one of the guys that you're he's 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 one of the first uh, first on the on the list to call? It depends on which product, you know, it is we make, I don't know, 40, 45 different pieces of equipment, some of them much smaller, some of them uh, for whole house integration and things like that. When it gets to, when it gets to the, the big boys, um, then John's John's in at the very, very beginning. Now, sometimes he's in by virtue of the fact that there is technology that we have been using that we intend to use in that piece. And then John will bless it and make sure that we haven't screwed it up, uh, you know, and diminished it in any way. Um, and, but generally we, we lay out what we want the amps, you know, our amps and preamps to be, um, and then come to John and say, is this feasible? You know, what can we do to make it better than we've done it before and things like that. So, um, yeah, I can be a real pest to him. <laughs> yeah, but, well. converse, but conversely, we talk, we probably talk three times a week. And I know this sounds weird um, for your viewers, but I think it's safe to say that I learned something from just about every conversation I have with him. And what a gift that is. Richard, I think you should say something about the JC1 Plus and succeeding the JC1. I'm being prompted. <laughs> I, I, can, I can hear your producer just, just to your left. Yeah, so that's I, great. I, um, I appreciate that. that. Right, so at least the audio can go in. <laughs> well, I think I don't know. I don't. By the way, how much time do we have? I don't. I don't want to be. Uh, we've got about a half an hour left, and then we got uh, Sujan. Uh, Sujan Hong's going to come on and and just a uh, a little bit do a little little Friday. You know what's coming out tomorrow uh, session. But we've got about a half an hour or so. Okay. And and Joe is by the way Joe, Joe's computer really is having some issues so I just uh, encouraged him to jump on when and if his computer is ready so you'll have double trouble on here. <laughs> well, that's that's actually the way I, I wanted it to begin with. I'd asked Joe if uh, if if he and Richard could both make it and he said, "Well, you know, Richard's got, you know, plenty to do, but I'll be more than happy to hop on," which was was fine with me. But I got to tell you, I am really glad you're here. I, 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 I actually wanted you on this anyway to begin with, so I'm super glad you're here. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, I hope I don't mess it up and I can, I can be invited in the future. Yeah, you're not going to mess it up. If you wanted to see somebody mess it up, you were you you probably did already when I was you know starting this whole thing and I was kind of semi freaking out. I was trying not to show that I was freaking out, but I was like going, "Oh God, I you wonder were, what you were doing. being so sincere, right?" <laughs> Well, so, like you can still be you can be sincere while you're freaking out, but I was still well, that's right. I was still a little bit worried. But thank you very much for uh, I, I don't even want to say take it up the slack. This wasn't this wasn't uh, this wasn't Joe's fault. And just so you guys know, uh, we are giving away for for the folks that that are just joining us. Uh, this is Richard Scram from from uh, Paris Sound, and he owns the company and. Um, I'm a huge, huge fan of these guys. And then Joe Finn, who's their national sales manager, uh, will be coming on hopefully in just a little bit. Um, and then we are going to, uh, whenever Sue Jane comes on, we'll, we'll, we'll get her to come on. But I've got a couple questions for you. How Please. have you guys been doing? Have you been do? have you been doing okay throughout the pandemic? Are you selling, uh, as much as you were? Are you keeping your company healthy? How are you guys doing? 
Well, that's the $64 question these days. Um, when we when we first got the instruction to shut down the company, which was March 16th or 17th, um, she's, she knows better. It was really shocking. Um, and my first thought was, uh, well, you know, audio is a, is a luxury product. Uh, the dealers are all going to go out of business. <laughs> um, the industry is going to tank. I'm never going to collect the money that's owed to us. And I was feeling pretty down about that. Um, but perhaps others that have been on you know, been on your show have told you that uh, the pandemic um, for audio companies that do it right um, has changed the whole landscape. The, the, the month in March that we only had, you know, half the month were shut down was pretty grim. And I was thinking, okay, this is the end of audio. Uh, I'm done. And this isn't the way I wanted it to happen. The next month was quite a bit better than May was the best May we, that we'd ever had and onward and upward. So as you've probably read, there's a lot of uh, industries that have uh, just prospered for the pandemic with people wanting to upgrade something in their home because that's where they're working now. And it turns out that audio, um, good audio, uh, has been a huge, re huge recipient um, of that. And the only thing that makes me not feel guilty about it is at least I know that we're bringing a lot of pleasure to people who otherwise wouldn't have it. And anything that anything that makes music in your home sounds be you know sound better is worthwhile. So the business has continued to grow, and we find ourselves now in a different kind of a dilemma than we ever expected, which is we can't get enough product. Um, I'm sure others can't. And the, the reasons for that are that every, every um, part of the chain is trying to uh, take advantage of this opportunity. So it starts with the parts makers who now require when you might have been able to buy a hundred of something before, you know, now they want you to buy 500 or a thousand of it and take it or leave it. Uh, parts that might have taken two or three months to get might be six months now. And, um, and this is in, in on and on. And then there's the shipping. And I'm sure, you know, people have read a, a lot about, you know, the increased cost of shipping and, and the time taken. So we find ourselves, um, in the enviable area of getting a whole lot of orders and the, the really painful area of not having, not having equipment to, uh, to sell continuously. Um, and we, we have actually, we've got orders placed and partly prepaid through March of next year. Um, and that's, it takes, it takes a company with a lot of solidity to be able to throw money at the factories to help them get, you know, get along. So, um, yeah, this is this is gonna, this is going to be a very challenging challenging summer, and it's, there's really no way to sugarcoat it. We're we're expecting a lot of calls, you know, like where's my this or can I order that? And there's going to be some days that we're just going to shake our head and say, "Sorry, but please don't forget us." Well, I'm glad to see that your company is still making a lot of products that are in high demand. Uh, I think this is just a, a resurgence in audio, uh, and I'll hey, I'm gonna, I'll yeah, tell you a, about that. Imposter. Wait, there's an imposter on the screen. Oh, is this uh, is this my old buddy Joe Finn? <laughs> David, this may be your old buddy Joe Finn, but I'm seeing a Jeannie Schram here in your podcast, and I'm not sure that's Jeannie Schram. Uh, I don't know. What's, it, hey, what's it to you, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the technical difficulties, and Richard, thank you so much for stepping in and uh, you know, stepping up to the plate. Well, David, David didn't, you know, kick me off the, uh, the show. So that's, that's okay. No, so, now, now that I've got you both here, I mean, I think, I think we, we all three kind of finish out the show if that's okay with you guys. Cause they're, it's, beautiful. this is really cool. Now we did get off to a kind of a weird start. Uh, and let's see, do we still have Sue Jan, uh, waiting on the, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, on the side, it does not look like it. As soon as Sue Jan comes on, we're going to let her go because she has, this is like the busiest lady I have ever seen. Right. Um, you you think that we're all busy? She's she's like going, hold my beer. I'll tell, I'll show you what busy <laughs> is because if it shows up on Coba, she's responsible for it. So as soon as Sue Jan comes in, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get going. In fact, I 
think I just see her. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a break for yeah. just a few minutes and, and, and uh, you guys will just be on the side. So stay right where you are. Uh, Joe, it's great to see you. We're going to catch Good up. Good to see you, minutes. my friend. Richard, great to, uh, uh, great to see you too. And thank you guys for showing. Um, so now we've got, I hate to say this cause it's, it's kind of my show, but we've got my favorite part of my show, which is, that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> it's, we've got, uh, Sue Jan Hong up right now and she's, uh, she's going to do the music desk section of our show. Hello, Sue Jan. How are hey, you David. I'm, I'm glad, glad you have power again. Uh, well, it's just been an incredibly strange day. I, yeah. I, Sue Jan's talking about uh, this morning I woke up and for the first two or three hours I had zero power, which is not the most comforting thing to have when you're going to, because you know what I'm thinking as soon as that happens, right? How am I going to do the show today? <laughs> so it's like, that would have been me having the technical difficulties. And I got to tell you, I refuse to do this at Starbucks with a, uh, with an iPad. It just would look terrible. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, the Mets just won their home opener, so I'm in a good mood. Yes. Go Mets. I can say that because I work for a company based out of New York and by golly, I almost feel like a New Yorker except for my accent. That, <laughs> that just doesn't, they barely let me in there talking like this. So, uh, Sue Jan, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. And Sue Jan, uh, as mentioned before, is our mu music merchandiser and the hardest working lady in show business, as far as I'm concerned. Um, she can only make these things rarely, you know, maybe a couple times a month at, at at most. But we're always really really glad to hear her because she knows so much about music. And not only that, I just love the way she describes music. Have you seen? How many when you put stuff up and you're talking about it after you finish the next several days? We are, I am barraged with people calling me and writing me and putting things on streaming music matters, going, Oh, tell Su Jan, thank you. Oh, I love this. This is so cool. cool. I'm, I'm sure you get those kinds. I hope you get that kind of feedback, but it's, it's, it, it is my truly my favorite part of the show. Cool. Well, that is really great to hear. And I'm glad people are um, checking out my picks and, you know, just enjoying the music. Well, I'm going to let myself uh, off for a little while. Let you uh, you do your thing. So, again, thanks for joining me, Sujan. And we'll talk in just a little bit. Sounds good. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, so we're going to kick things off with this week's album of the week which is a deluxe reissue of the 1980 double album Live from Fleetwood Mac. Uh, you know, that little band that went viral last fall. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen the TikTok video of that like super chill looking guy cruising on his skateboard on what looks like a highway in LA or somewhere in California um, while he's taking swigs from a bottle of Ocean Spray Cranberry and lip syncing to Dreams. So that video, you know, introduced the band to a whole new generation of fans and returned um, the album Rumors back to the charts after a 42 year, year gap. Uh, but on Cobas, though, that band, uh, you know, the band continues to be one of our listeners' favorites. Um, Dreams is actually the third track here. Um, Stevie Nicks sounds incredible on this recording from the Palais du Sport, Sport, Sport in uh, Paris from uh, June 1980. The track list is actually stitched together from uh, the 112 shows that the band played between October 79 and September of the following year. Uh, the band recorded audio and video at every one of them, and there are at least three continents represented in these 30 tracks. So, you know, this isn't a replacement for all the live shows we've been missing for the past year, but it's a really great reminder of the unparalleled experience of seeing a band at its peak. And for more Fleetwood Mac, you can check out our panoramas and playlists on Stevie Nicks and the band's early blues period with Peter Green. And this will be available in 2496 from Rhino. So next up we have Rhiannon Giddens with Francesco Terizi, They're Calling Me Home. 
Uh, Giddens is probably best known as one of the founding members of the old-timey band Carolina Chocolate Drops. She was actually not named for the Fleetwood Mac song, but after a Welsh goddess. Their Calling Me Home is her second album with Italian multi-instrumentalist uh, Terese. They had previously worked together on 2019's There Is No Other. Uh, so though both artists are based in Ireland uh, when they're not on the road and have been there since last March due to the pandemic, uh, you know, the lockdown stirred up a lot of strong emotions about the concept of home uh, and, and as well as death uh, in the two. So the uh, exploration of these feelings resulted in 12 songs recorded outside of Dublin um, in less than a week. Uh, a dozen workings on the concept of, you know, going or coming home. Uh, the songs range from the title Dirge, written by Alice Gerard, where Giddens sings over uh, mournful viola, uh, to a wordless interpretation of Amazing Grace with uh, vo uh, vocals augmented by bagpipe over a repetitive drumbeat, uh, to Nena Nena, an Italian lullaby Teresi used to sing to his infant daughter. And this is available in 2496 from Nonesuch tomorrow. Next up, we have uh, Matthew E. White and Lonnie Holly, Broken Mirror, A Selfie Reflection. Uh, so this is another collaboration, this time between Lonnie Holly, who is a 71-year-old artist from Alabama. Um, his found art sculptures have been displayed at Mass Mocha, uh, the White House Rose Garden, um, along with uh, Richmond, Virginia's Matthew E. White, um, who is 30 years uh, Holly's junior, and who first made waves with his really excellent debut, Big Inner, about a decade ago. Um, Holly and White first got together in 2019 when White and his band backed up Holly at a show in Richmond. And here they work together again. Uh, Holly is providing stream of consciousness uh, spoken word about technology and broken objects as a metaphor for the state of the world. Um, these growls that actually transform into real words. Um, they're all set against uh, White's futuristic, uh, paranoid, uh, but organic sounding instrumentals that kind of weave in and out of free jazz and industrial. Um, this is a weird record that may have only been born out of something like this pandemic. So um, definitely check it out. It's coming out in 2444-1 on Space Bomb, which is uh, White's act uh, own label. And then we have uh, Vijay Iyer, Uneasy. Uh, he is our second pick today to have been a MacArthur Genius Grant uh, Award recipient, the first being Rhiannon Giddens. Uh, on Uneasy, the pianist is in trio mode, uh, joined by double bassist Linda May Han Oh and drummer Taishan Sori. Um, for a set that was recorded in December 2019 in Mount Vernon, New York. This is uh, his first trio album since uh, 2015's Break Stuff and covers originals written over a span of two decades along with songs originally by Jerry Allen and Cole Porter. Um, and for his review of Uneasy, uh, Koba's contributor, Jason Ferguson writes, um, I'm just gonna share this because I think it really sums up the record so well. Iyer continues his unique balancing act of presenting complex and demanding compositional ideas in a framework that's welcoming and accessible with players who see eye to eye and can help execute that vision in a way that's imaginative and invigorating. And this will be out tomorrow in 2496 from ECM. Uh, and finally, uh, Zappa, Frank Zappa. So a reminder that Koba's is your home for all things Frank Zappa. We have a bunch of titles like Absolutely Free and Bongo Fury, the entire Halloween 81 box set, um, along with their digital booklets uh, that are available in high res for the first time ever and you can only stream and download them uh, on Kobas. Uh, for streaming, go to Kobas on your browser, uh, click on the high res tag and search for Frank Zappa. Uh, for downloads, just scroll on down to the Frank Zappa module and click, it's super easy. Um, we have it right there and we'll be getting more uh, Zappa in high res uh, in the coming weeks. I had muted myself, so I should have done sign language. I said, thank you so much. It's always great having you. <laughs> but I do I do want to know one thing. Yes. And this is just this is just personal between you and I. Mm -hmm. 
What's what's your favorite Fleetwood Mac? Uh, I like this kind of poppy song that Lindsey Buckingham wrote called "Think About Me." Oh, okay, <laughs> so the so the the newer Fleetwood Mac stuff. You like the newer stuff, right? I mean, yeah, you know, the, you can't go wrong with you know something off of Tusk or Rumors. Um, I'm sure the Peter Green blues era is her jam, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is. I loved. I just love the uh, the randomness of the whole thing. It's basically mm -hmm. how they like start and stop anytime something's uh, most people would have gone okay new take we got to start that all over but these guys just keep going so I, I just find it totally entertaining and I do love the music but you're right you're uh, you you nailed me you you always do so Sujan thank you so much for coming on I, I love it when you're here and uh I'll talk to you I think tomorrow during our meeting so until then we're gonna we're going to say goodbye and uh, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Okay. All right. My pleasure, David. Take care. Take care now. Okay, guys, let's bring back on my old friend, Joe, and my newish friend, Richard, as soon as Richard pops on. But as soon as he does, we'll, we'll, we'll let him go. Man, I wish we had a little more time or we, we didn't get so delayed at the beginning because I really <laughs> wanted to talk about you know, I, some, some background that you and I have together, but you know, I really want to just go ahead and hop into some of the product and, and just sure. let you, you talk about, you know, some of the cool things that you guys have got going on at uh, Parasound, not Paradigm. I, was, <laughs> I, was I don't know why I got that in my mind, but, but Paradigm was a super she i I, for the first year, I worked for the worst hi-fi company in existence back in 1979, believe it or not, a place called CMC. And like everything was like, oh, don't sell the brand name, sell the sell the <laughs> derivatives, sell our stuff, you know, that's got, you know, our, and I just found it to be so creepy. I almost got out of the industry because of it. And then finally, thank goodness I found Hi-Fi Buys where was my next home for what 16 years or so. But uh David, did you say CMC? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> you, did you know Jerry Dreyer? Yeah. Okay. I think he fired me. <laughs> that might have I been slammed, a badge of honor. I, I slammed Burl Northrup's hand in a in one of those old cedar cabinets, and I was managing the store. I, I think I was their youngest manager. I think I was like twenty one or something. And they called me from their car, which was not a cell phone. It was a car phone back then. You had to be like James Bond to have this thing. He said, Mr. Solomon, we would no longer be needing your, your services. <laughs> so I got fired for like slamming the meanest guy at audio's hand. And, I, and it's like, thank God I did. because <laughs> That's the idea I would have got the audio industry. But there were so many awesome people. And, you know, I know Joe is one of them. He's, he's very near and dear to my heart uh, for, for a lot of reasons, mainly because he really helped influence the direction that I eventually went in. Um, so Joe, so David, can you. I share a quick David Solomon story with your listeners? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go because I want so, to talk about the air sound. Sounds <laughs> good. But your, your listeners probably should know that there I was in 1986, I would guess doing a two-day B&O seminar in Mount Prospect, Illinois. And you could tell pretty quickly. So, you know, these two or three guys are just here because their store manager sent them. These two or three guys are, you know, kind of into it and so forth. And you just stood out from the crowd as a guy who just got it, you know, who had the energy and enthusiasm that people love to relate to. And I thought, that David Solomon guy, I, get, I need to make sure I stay in touch with him. And we have stayed in touch ever since. And so, um, you know, I, I definitely count you as one of my best friends in the industry and, and always will. Well, thank you so much. I really You're appreciate welcome. that. It's like, hey, I don't David, know about you guys. But to throw in. Jeannie wants to know, know what you have against New York women. <laughs> and be, very, and be very careful how you answer that. Against New York women. I have zero against New York women. Okay. Nothing. No, when uh, Jack, you, you were saying something about New York women or something like no, that. No, no, no. I was saying that I'm, I can't even believe they let me in New York with this accent. It, it, people look at me re really weird, especially when they find that I'm Jewish. And, you know, you can't. You, you can't be Jewish and have this accent in New York. You just, 
it's against the rules. They will kick you out. That's not the way you say this. And, and so, you know, I just, I just go with the flow, but no, I love, I love, uh, I love the people of New York. I love the experience in New York It's one of my favorite places. My two favorite places, New York, Denver, totally, totally opposite, but I love those two places. Those are my two favorite places to visit when I can. So guys, let's get into uh, some of this stuff because I'd really like to talk a little bit about, you know, we, I, I don't want to make this uh, um, just something we say. I came on, it's all oh, really like Paradigm. It's like, well, Parasound. Parasound. Why do you <laughs> like Parasound? But, and I was talking about signal and noise ratio and just, you know, pure hard power that drives almost anything that, that, that you could that you could think of. So uh, Joe sent me a few pictures, um, one of which is the JC1. And I'd, I'd like to kind of bring that up right now, if I could. This is actually, we decided instead of showing it, uh, showing the front of this guy, we're just going to show you the inside and, and let uh, Joe and, and Richard tell you a little bit about what's going on in this thing. Well, you know, one thing we might really start with, David, is that CoBuzz exists because you want to give your listeners a better experience. And obviously, there are all kinds of manufacturers out there who make the very least expensive, most entry-level products in the marketplace. Uh, but we really appreciate the fact that you have just, you and your CoBuzz comrades have uncovered another way to deliver a better experience to people because, you know, an amp like this incredible JC1 Plus, one of the things that it's really best at is showing you details you wouldn't hear unless you had a, you know, a high quality musical experience feeding it. So whether that's a really great turntable and cartridge or a CoBuzz or any other high resolution source, you know, this kind of a product is really good at helping, you know, helping deliver that. So I think this goes back. Thank, thank, thank you, Joe. We, you were talking about uh, John Curl previously, you know, and, and his and his magic. And there's probably no better example of it than the JC1 Plus because we can't talk about it without the history of the JC1. Um, and and the, the credit that Curl deserves for designing a product that was so good, so far ahead of its time and such a great value that it was in the marketplace for over 15 years. It was a stereophile class A recommended component twice a year for all of those 15 years. Um, the first unit that was built sounded exactly the same as the last unit that was built. And so the... Um, <laughs> Oh, just keep talking. These guys. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think, so I think that the idea of like, you know, first principles, the reason that that product stayed in the market for so, so long is because John knew so much uh, that, and other people just didn't. Um, and that was engineered so that it wouldn't be obsolete. The original JC one today would still command a very good price and is still a better amplifier than most uh, that are much much more expensive than that. So that's 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 really the genealogy of this product. And it took 15 years because John really didn't have any much anything to say that could make it better until it was 2014 when he gave me some thoughts about um, what it could do. And you know, we ran with that. And this will probably be in the market for 15 years, you know, as well. No, no, you know, no, no um, upgrades. Or anything like that, because you know that that raises the question in my mind: Why didn't you get it right in the first place? And so, trying to squeeze money out of people with you know continuous stream of upgrades, I think that's kind of. I mean, okay, yeah, you know, that's that's okay if that's what you want to do. That's not how we do it. No, I appreciate that. I think a lot of people do, um, especially when a product is right to begin with. Um, you know, maybe you can make it a little better when some new technology comes out. And I think that's what happened with you guys. And, and if not, Hey, it's good. It stands on its own. This is a, this is a, this is a mono amplifier, right? Yes. Yeah. So these, these mono amplifiers, uh, there are Let's just talk about these guys for just a second. What kind of power into say eight ohms and then four ohms are you dealing with on the JC one plus? Uh, 450 at eight ohms, and I think it is. I actually, I'd have to have the specs in it's, front of me. 
eight, 800 at four and uh, capable of 1300 watts into a two ohm load. Continuous. Yeah. So this is an amplifier that, that, like the very best amplifiers that have ever been made, can drive speakers that are just absolutely nearly impossible to drive. Personally, guys, I love monobloc amplifiers because I want as short a speaker cable going to my amp, going to my speaker as I can possibly get. I don't mind running long interconnects. I don't run, especially when they're balanced. And you guys have got this thing yeah. balanced, but I really detest running. 20 feet, even 10 feet of speaker cable when I can run, you know, a few inches of speaker cable and make it from the terminals to my speakers. It makes your system just sound better, period, no matter what. Would you guys For all the right that? reasons. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So these are monoblock amplifiers, and they, you know, while they – in some circles would be considered extremely expensive. In my circle, it's it's incredibly inexpensive for what you get. These amplifiers have been compared to amplifiers much, much more expensive and uh, and many times actually come out on top. Is that <coughs> correct, guys? Absolutely. Yes. You know, actually, and one of the things I really enjoy about Parasound, David, is that some of the folks that, our manufacturing product at this sort of a level, you know, they, they make things up there, but when it comes to a customer who says, I want a great experience, but I'm just not there, you know, there's a certain pr price point below which they just don't go. With Parasound, we have products at $199 retail for customers. You know, you look at an amplifier like a 2125, well below $1,000. It's a THX Ultra 2 approved amp, and it's really good. So I think it's neat to be able to work for a manufacturer that has products that can compete with the absolute heavyweight product in the industry. And I certainly wouldn't say entry-level product necessarily, but, but product that's really affordable to a lot of people and kind of everything in between. So uh, you know, that's, that's, I think, a, a real plus. Yeah, well, there's, there's several things about Parasound that I really dig. Another one would be... Uh, the multi-channel amplifiers you guys sell that actually sound good in multi-channel. When I say multi-channel, I'm talking about like different zones because most of the time when you see zoned out amplifiers, they're not very good amplifiers that are going to zone two, zone three, zone four, zone five. Uh, I never want less performance in zone three than I've got in less in, in, in zone one. And you guys are really good at doing that. We're going to get you guys back on the show and talk a little more about that. But for now, why don't we stick with the uh, kind of the main gear and, 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 and then we can kind of build on it from that. Because I want to save a little bit of time to talk about the, the Hint 6, which I think is maybe one of the most relevant integrated amplifiers uh, on the market today. But before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about the, uh, the JC2. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about the JC2BP guys. Sure. They, uh, Rich, um, Richard, you want to go or? Yeah. Well, it, since Joe only joined us a few years ago, uh, and this is, um, uh, predates him. Um, I, I can give you the, the, really the idea of why did we do this in the first place? Uh, and what, it, what did it mean and what's it about? <coughs> and this came about, uh, from John. Uh, he knew that there was a really good way to make a preamp. It didn't have to be uh, just, you know, extreme. Um, and we and we put in a lot of the details. If you look at the way this thing is is uh, built, you can see there's two substantial aluminum barriers in there. One of them to totally uh, isolate the power supply from the rest of it, and the other in part because there's a little microprocessor behind the front panel that takes care of all of the remote control and other uh, other things like that, which makes it the, the last time I looked, this was the highest signal to noise ratio of any uh, commercially available um, preamplifier. It was like 115 dB unweighted or something like that, which is why it's had such, you know, such a good life overall so this is and john and john brought in carl thompson who's been his circuit board design uh, partner for many many years uh so there's some magic in there uh and a gentleman named bob crump who passed away some time ago and he was the one who could really actually hear 
a difference in you know different component parts, wires, whatever there was. So we had the the ability of, of all of this um, just huge mental horsepower in putting it together, and um, which is why we're still why we're still making it. There was there's we actually don't know how to make a better one right now. So this is this is our best preamp with with history. Yeah, 114 dB is crazy signals to noise ratio. This is one of those pieces that I was talking about before. If you happen to miss the beginning of the show when I was kind of here by myself, one of the cool things about this this uh, this preamp and the amp of uh, the uh, integrated follow suit is you can take this 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 preamp and literally crank it up all the way. Put your ear up to the tweeter, and you know what you hear. Nada. You hear nothing. There is absolutely no noise that's being that's being uh, produced by this thing. Um, and this is I'm not I'm not one to tell people go out, you know, study the specs, look at the specs and buy on specs. I'm I'm absolutely opposed to that. But I, I'm not opposed to um, letting you in on the little secret that the only way that you can really create high resolution is if you're preamplifier and your amplifier are quiet. And when I talk about quiet, I'm talking about dead quiet, black quiet. If this correct, guys, is that? I, I think that's as good a synopsis as I could think of. Yeah, and from a Kobo's perspective, of course, David. Again, we're talking about a higher resolution source. Well, if your equipment isn't capable of, of you know, letting you hear what it can do, you might wind up disappointed. But uh, I think this is a, a perfect product to match with Cobuzz. Uh, yeah, any, any of our products that are, you know, uh, that, that customers can get, they're, they're going to be a fine match for what you guys can offer. And I'm very excited that you've got all the Zappa product coming out. That's awesome. <laughs> all of this what? I'm sorry. All the Frank Zappa product. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, we had Amit Zappa on last week, and uh, the 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 stuff that that Sujan was talking about a little while ago is going to be exclusive to CoBuzz for uh, awesome. for some time now. So we're really uh, we're really happy about that. The um, the I think the next thing I want to go over. We're already over time, guys. Is that okay with you? I, I okay, great. So is it okay if we go just a little bit longer? Sure. Okay, great. Because <laughs> if not, it's like, oh my gosh, why do we even have this? The other product that I want to talk to you guys about is the one that's really one of the more exciting products to me, only because um, unlike the JC2 and the uh, uh, the JC1 Plus, it, this one takes up a good bit less room, but you're really not um, you're really not lacking in performance, which is the the Hint Six. Mm -hmm. this little guy here That's what right. a gorgeous integrated amplifier can you guys tell me a little about this because like I, I said this a little bit earlier this to me is one of the most relevant integrated amplifiers on the market um, because it does what it's supposed to do it's got plenty of power and is dead quiet but what can you tell me about this product that you think makes it super relevant Joe may I sure sure go ahead so this um, this product took a long time, and, uh, and and a lot of the credit goes to another uh, Parasound employee. His name is Bob McDonald, and he used to be um, an integrator, custom installer, uh, and brings with him uh, a lot of knowledge about inputs and outputs and features and things like that that uh, that basically can blend something into. Um, a multi-channel system or just be a, a you know a straight out two channel product the power amplifier part of it we borrowed from our a23 um halo uh, amp that uses john Cur you know john curl's topology choice of parts and things like that and there's no compromise in this comparing it to uh the the amplifier that's you know just an amplifier so the um that was that was really the the objective for it, and we, we wanted it to do would be to perform as well as a separate preamp and power amp, with no uh, no faults, no nothing to complain about noise or anything like that. So that was the mandate for it. It took a really really long time uh, to do it, uh, but it's it's using the, the the high cost Toshiba 
uh, FETs that are you know that are so um, rare. In fact, I think we're the only ones that actually have them. Um, so it's it's as good it's as good as a good uh, separate preamp and power amp, conveniently in a in a three rack space um, product. And then the, the, actually, for, from my perspective, the rear panel looks better than the front panel because that's that's where all the business is. Now Joe has another. You now Joe will have his own opinion. I, I concur. Uh, yeah, you've got all the inputs and outputs that you can want. There's a half a dozen analog inputs, including the phono input, four digital inputs. For a lot of customers, David, I think, you know, let's keep it simple. In this one product, I get really everything I need from an electronics perspective. I just start plugging in sources and connect my speakers and we're good to go. So, um, yeah, that's, I think, the real beauty of an integrated amp is you, you can make one choice and, and be done with the electronics part and move on to the rest of it. I just wanted to point something out that illustrates how Parasound looks at things. There is one of the three knobs on the left side of the panel is uh, a gain control for a, a subwoofer. Why would you want to do that? Well, who wants to get up and, and walk over to where the sub is and make an adjustment if the music you're listening to, you know, should should require something like that? It doesn't cost anything to do that. I mean, it's just minimal compared to to the rest of it, but what you have to do is know about it and think about it and execute it. And a lot of companies, you know, a lot of companies are like that. And I think some of it is my my background before starting the company was in retail, and there's a lot of things you learn in retail. Um, and you listen to customers and they tell you what you want. The mindset kind of informs everything we do at Parasound, and we have some very lively uh, product uh, meetings periodically and, and Joe's actually the the most polite of all of us <laughs> well and even you know a feature David like so many of your customers are walking around probably 99 percent of your your customers are walking around with one of these guys in their pocket with all kinds of their favorite music loaded onto it but these guys were never intended to be sort of audiophile devices so that little aux input that's on the front that's right next to the headphone input has a 12 dB gain boost simply to be able to you know, give this guy its best opportunity to sound as, as high resolution as it can sound and you know, really be a valued source in your system. So there are a lot of little touches like that that, as Richard says, you, know, you just listen to customers and think about their experience, what do they want, and you, know, you sort of build to that mindset. And, and uh, that's, that's a part of what keeps people coming back to Parasound over and over again when they're purchasing. So the, there's a couple of things that, that to me, the, 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 there's a few things that make this a super relevant piece today as well. Uh, one, it's got really pretty much everything you need. Tell me what kind of power, you told me this before, but I want to hear from your your lips. What kind of power are we talking about here? Uh, 180 into a 8 ohm load and, a, and 240 into a 4 ohm load. So, so for most speakers, it'll it'll drive almost anything unless you've got something like, you know, probably some crazy apogees or, you know, things that take a dead short to drive them, but it, it'll push most any speaker on the market really well. But the thing I like about this is all you need is this, uh, some sort of a streamer and a pair of speakers and you're done. Uh, this particular piece has got an amp preamp headphone amplifier and D to a converter all built into this one piece. And that's still while maintaining this crazy, I think this one's over 110 dB, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that correct, guys? Double check it real quick. Yeah, so this one's got crazy signal to noise ratio as well. Um, so the thing I really like about it and the thing that I think makes it the most relevant is you you basically need a pair of speakers and a streamer with this thing and you're you're completely done mm -hmm. um the other thing that i really like about it and i'm going to get in trouble with this with my audiophile friends is I, 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 why did people take bass and trouble away <laughs> from uh from a integrated amplifier i mean from from time to time you i don't know about you guys but i like all kinds of music i mean it can be from the from the twenties on, you know, anything that was recorded, I, there's, there's some music in that generation that I like that I want to listen to. But if you listen to an early recording of Billie Holiday, I got news for you. It's got absolutely zero bass. In fact, it doesn't have zero bass. It's got like negative <laughs> six DB bass, right? So it's nice for me to be able to go, you know what? I want to add a little bit more body to this thing or, 
just the opposite of that. You listen to almost any uh, rock and roll that was recorded from, you know, like 1970 through about mid 90s. And if you're not careful, it will rip your head off with the top end. So it's really nice to be able to attenuate some of that down a little bit. Um, so it's so that you could just enjoy the music more. People will talk to you about phase shift and that kind of thing. But I think the <laughs> the benefits will far outweigh the uh, uh, any kind of a degradation that you might see. Would you guys agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Or you wouldn't have put it on there to I, begin I, with. No, I've had products, you know, like subwoofers, where they've got, you know, zero to 180 degree phase. Um, and I find it harder in some instances to even hear the difference from the phase. It, that doesn't mean it's not there. But I, th I think the, the immediate uh, benefit of having these tone controls outweighs anything. And by the way, they're, they're this, a traditional slope. Um, so these will, these will sound the same in terms of how they um, <coughs> affect the sound as ordinary um, tone controls do. But that's where, that's, where, that's where it stops because the parts quality and everything else that goes into this um, is, is remarkable. So I'd say two things about this. A, it's a great, uh, you know, it, it's just got great, great tone control. But the first part is you had to think about doing it. <laughs> I mean, where, you know, where does that come from? That comes from listening to your customers. And so we wouldn't have thought of having an integrated without tone controls on it. It would be stupid. David, you made such a good point with what does the what does the record itself sound like? You know, what does the what did that album sound like? I'll never forget the first time I listened to Dark Side of the Moon, and of course, I had never heard music like that. Uh, but not only did I realize that the music was different than anything I'd ever heard, but I slowly started realizing, hey, this thing really sounds good. Because if you listen to you know some of the Beatles records from the mid '60s, there's like you say, there's just no real the kick drum doesn't sound like a kick drum. And all of a sudden, here was the capability to have that. Well, you you want tone controls for those situations where a particular record has too much of this or not enough of that to be able to do a little shaping. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to excuse myself because you're in much absolutely. better hands with Joe than with me. <laughs> and um, Richard, and thanks I, for uh, thank I'm, you for. I'm really I'm really glad you had the opportunity. It's great to see you, man. It's good to see you really as well. Nice. I'm glad well, you're doing well. Looking forward Thanks. to seeing you guys at a show soon. Everybody's hoping for a show soon. <laughs> take, take, take care, the Richard. First, the first one's on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for stepping in, Richard. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> All right, JoJo. <laughs> yep. So we're back on track. An hour back later, on, we're back on track. <laughs> you, you bet. Should we start taking the questions from your audience, do you think? Or what do you, you want know, to do next? I think we've gone through most of the uh, – okay. The stuff so uh absolutely let's uh we can take a few of these things uh how about how about this one can you talk this is uh, a churro thank you for uh, writing a churro can you talk about the headphone output how capable is it is it is it you know i have not listened to the headphone output so i couldn't tell you it is a good sounding one I, I want to make sure I don't overstep my bounds there because as you know people are buying these days two and three and thousand and dollar and more expensive headphones um, but I think you'll be impressed when you listen to a product like the Hint 6 and its headphone amplifier because we did pay attention to it and it does really sound good uh, yeah those in every training I do on these products I talk about those two little inputs on the extreme left side of the amp uh, because that and, and you know again the ability to have these things actually sound pretty good uh, you know is, is really I think important so Two things, Joe. Number one, sure. uh, when you say these phones sound good, are you talking about from an analog level? Or are you actually able to use like a camera kit or some kind of a uh, a USB converter and, and actually run them into the uh, amp digitally? Well, you could use a USB converter, but I'm just talking about that front panel connector for, you know, just plugging gotcha. in. You know, your, your buddy shows up and he's got all his favorite music and wants to play you some of his faves. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. Isn't, isn't it awesome that CoBuzz enables people to, sh to you know, enjoy music in a way that you don't have to lug around? I mean, when I was in retail, and I'm sure when you were, I literally lugged around a little, like a briefcase filled with record albums. You know, Mine it's wasn't little. It, yeah. was, <laughs> it was just crazy. Um, and then, of course, you know, we graduated from that, and then we had our booklets of CDs. And, 
Yeah, uh, music has come a long way. Uh, this generation, um, oh my gosh, I wish I was a little younger to enjoy it for a little bit longer time because it was so difficult in our day to, you know, pull up what you wanted because you couldn't pull it up. You had to go buy it, right? <laughs> right. Well, We've already wanna... answered this, but Leonard uh, uh, asks how many watts is the integrated? I believe you said it's 160 right into eight. And and 240 into a four-ohm load. So it's yeah. very capable. And I did want to comment, by the way, we frequently, I would say, get uh, emails or occasional phone calls uh, from MagnaPan customers. And you, know, you wouldn't think that a big set of Maggies would do well with an integrated, but they do great with our integrated. So um yeah, that's it's a very capable product. We take that whole, you know, being able to drive the two ohm load part seriously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and just for those of you that that, that uh, are wondering what Joe's talking about, when you start running, uh, speakers have got more or less resistance depending on uh, on the in impedance that they're that they're running at, and the lower impedance speakers, like when you're dealing with a two ohm load, you are literally running. Uh, more than twice of the twice of the current through the amplifier as would be required when you're running like eight ohms, right? Eight ohms is mm -hmm. a lot easier. Sixteen ohms would be even easier than that. There are not a lot of sixteen ohm speakers out there these days, but but the lower the impedance on the on the speaker, the harder it is for an amplifier to drive it. In fact, if you run a two ohm load into many many amplifiers these days, you end up letting the smoke out. Yeah, yeah. Right. just stop the show. <laughs> just totally stop the show. So that is that is a real big deal, and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and all of your amplifiers are AB amplifiers. They're not digital amps, right? We are doing some things with digital amplifiers now. Your main yeah, stuff, the JC1. Right, not, the, oh, yeah. The Those are all yeah. uh, AB amplifiers, which is a, right. just to give you a little – background on that those were a lot more expensive to produce mm -hmm. than a digital amplifier would be there's a, just a lot more parts to them there's a lot more biasing to, to do to them there's just a lot more stuff that you have to do to an analog amplifier an ab amplifier to make it uh, to make it sound good right and you know again some of your customers some of your listeners will already know that there are differences in efficiency with Outside of the impedance issue you addressed a moment ago, there are differences in efficiency. So a pair of, you know, Tecton Moabs or a pair of Klipsch corner horns, you might be in a 95, 96 dB efficiency arena. I was talking to a customer the other day who has an 84 dB efficient speaker. So, you know, again, you, you really have a need for a good amplifier if you want to be able to play it reasonably loudly and, you know, you, and you don't have an efficient speaker. So... Yeah, and even if you do, there's there's this thing called headroom that is really, really good to have. People don't typically blow their speakers from having too much power. They typically blow their speakers from not having enough power. So if you try to feed a speaker um, a signal that you're trying to get louder than the amplifier will produce, that produces the that produces DC straight to your speaker, clips the amp, <laughs> and any of that extra is is direct current. Speakers or voice calls do not do very well with direct current. That's they right. typically start, you know, they typically melt or they typically just just blow. Yeah, right. So that's right. That's right. it's always better to have a little headroom. It's just like you don't want your car if you're only going to drive at 55. You don't want a car that will only do 55, right? It, it's just too hard on the engine. You want a car that'll do 100, right? So right. when you're going 55, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot less strain for that engine. That's Same right. principle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, Joe, we didn't. Let's see. I think we got one more tech question. If the impedance is easier, the higher the speaker gets, why does the wattage go down uh, as you go higher? Uh, it 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 actually. Oh, the wattage because you're you're asking it to produce less current. So if you say, let's just say you've got a hundred watt amplifier at eight ohms and you're, but you're only asking it to drive 16 ohms. Um, it's not going to put out as much power there. It'll probably put out roughly half that much, but hopefully they have um, uh, dealt with that at the speaker level and made it that much more efficient. So it's really just resistance of electricity. It's right. It's, it's uh, it, 
it's not even a spec that you'd need to pay attention to just find the speakers that you really love. And, you know, you'll, you'll end up figuring out the amplifier that, that it needs. So if it's a speaker that drops to two ohms, then you want an amplifier that will at least drive two ohms. If you're conjugate right. at eight ohms to six ohms, it just doesn't take that much current, but. Right. Right. So Brian, just to kind of amplify your wonderful question, most specs that you can look at online for any given manufacturer's amplifier it might say that this amp is capable of 100 watts into an 8 ohm load but that's always measured with an 8 ohm load resistor and neither you brian nor david nor i none of us ever listen to an 8 ohm load resistor we listen to speakers and that impedance curve is changing all the time so that's why having an amplifier that's capable of you know, driving a wide range of impedances is a really good thing yeah, and an atom speaker is very rarely an atom speaker. Right. That's nominal. Uh, that's a nominal impedance that it'll that it'll uh, register with, or it's atoms most of the times. But there are atom speakers that will drop down to a quarter ohm. That's right. Uh, so it's really you <clears throat> want to try to look at that impedance curve if you can if you can find that so that you will know what uh, what the better amps are are. And and you know here's the cool thing. You can have lesser amplifiers driving lower impedances, but until you listen to an amplifier that can truly drive that lower impedance, you never know what your speakers really sound like. <laughs> Very good. Do, do you, do, isn't that true? Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I, I actually had an experience back when I worked for Polk Audio about 30 years ago. I, I was telling you about this earlier. We had a pair of bookshelf speakers that sold for $199 retail. Hey, James. Um, and it was called the Model 4, as I recall. And one day I walked into the room where the engineers did all their listening tests. And just for fun, they had hooked up about $10,000 worth of electronics to these, this $200 a pair retail speaker. And I was astounded at how good those little Model 4s sounded. I couldn't believe it. So I think probably many customers who own a nice pair of speakers have never heard how really good those speakers can sound you know, because they haven't really fed it the best electronics they can feed it. So um, as, as much as I'm a big fan of going out and auditioning speakers and, you know, finding a pair that really sounds good to you, if you can't do it all at once, that's fine. But if you can't also afford to upgrade your amp, think about going back six months later and, and upgrading the electronics because it can just be amazing. Um, you know, and, it, and again, that's where, you know, you guys at Cobas are able to supply the kind of signal where people can really appreciate, oh yeah, I'm hearing what I want to hear. Yeah, that's really funny. You should say that that you should rec recount that story from Polk Audio because Sandy Gross, uh, who is one of the founders of Polk Audio, was mm -hmm. he, was Sandy still with them when you were there? He had left about six months before I got okay. there. Okay, so Sandy, every single time I got together with him at Polk, he would like pull out these big pass amplifiers. I, I heard the pass amplifiers on that little Polk floor. <laughs> and so when you started to talk about this, this, this uh, uh, philosophy at Polk, it really wasn't a joke. It's like these guys loved playing these fairly uh, inexpensive speakers. They weren't very much at all uh, on these massive amplifiers that were just like, it would seem that it would outclass the speaker, but it didn't. It just made the speaker sound incredible. But I, I, I had that very experience with the fours as well. Great. That was a fun company when you were working for them. Absolutely. That was a great time to be, to be working for those guys. And, you know, lifelong uh, friendships again. Oh, absolutely. So tell me, uh, Joe, before we get out of here, I, because we really do have to leave in about a couple of minutes. Have okay. I, what if, I know we just missed so much. I, we, you'll come back on the show maybe soon. And we oh, can, I'd love it. I'd love it. Anytime show, you want. Show me this T-shirt that we're giving away. Absolutely. Thank you, David. So uh, you're giving away some cold one subscriptions. We've got a nice pair of sound T-shirt that we can give away. If That's you can, get, uh, We've got them in different sizes and in ladies uh, as well. So if you can just figure out who the winners are and let us know what the sizes are. Uh, look at that. There's the Cobuzz giveaway. Yeah, there we go. Go to that, uh, go to that website or go to that link and uh, fill it out and we'll get you. Uh, hopefully you'll win either Cobuzz uh, 
or the t-shirt. Actually, that's what we're doing. We're going to give away three CoBuzz uh, memberships and three, there's six months and then three of the uh, Parasound t-shirts. But um, yeah, go, go in there and, and, and enter and, uh, and, and hopefully you'll, and hopefully you'll win. Uh, Joe, what if I left out? I know I've left out like the most important thing in the world that you wanted to say, uh, just due to lack of time. But what, what did we leave oh, out that you'd like to end here's with? Here's something important I'd like to to share with you, and that's that I want to be back on your show again as soon as possible. So you you let me know when you've got an opening. I know that all kinds of industry people would love to be on your show, but uh, if you've got an opening at some point in the future, here you let me know so we can come back and and we'll have some more fun. Great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. And if you don't mind me asking you, because the question um, went out there, my favorite Fleetwood Mac tune, because, you know, obviously Cobuzz has now got, you know, the Fleetwood Mac catalog more available than ever before. My favorite tune is one from kind of an obscure record called Mystery to Me that was during the Bob Welch era. And oh. it's the first song on it. It's called Hypnotized. And it has this Mick Fleetwood drum beat you're just before the song even really gets going, you're thinking, okay, what's this going to be? And then, you know, it's just a beautiful little tune. So, so what's your favorite Fleetwood Mac song? Well, it's, it's actually, I'm an album guy. So it's okay. like the original Fleetwood Mac. It's that's Peter my, Green. that's my favorite Fleetwood Mac album. And yeah, anything with Peter Green, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's just that that's one of those bands that, changed <laughs> 1 million just 180 degrees and kept the same name right because yes. it's just not even close to the same music but yeah anything with peter green is my i, I love that era okay. and but i can appreciate the uh the uh, lindsey buckingham and the, the you know the stevie nicks and that I, I like that era as well they're you know it was just a great band in oh well no well. <laughs> as a as a drummer, I, I I feel compelled to do a to do a rim shot, but I'm I'm gonna not. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, David. And, uh, Total pleasure. Thank you very much. And everyone, thank you very much for joining CoBuzz Live. Join us next week. I'm not even going to tell you who it is because we got a really special guest and we're going to have an absolute blast uh, next week. And thank you for very much for joining us. And we hope to uh, we hope to see you then. Until then, we hope you enjoy your music and we hope you enjoy your high res music even more. For now, this is David Solomon signing off for CoBuzz Live on Thursday. Thanks for joining us.